March edition of In Our Neighborhoods. This month, we will be featuring a Taste of Home event, a tea party for charity, a Mardi Gras celebration, and a look at our wonderfully decorated neighborhood signs. Fox Lake had a Taste of Home party held at the Lake House on January 22nd. There's nothing better than celebrating tastes of home with friends and neighbors. Oh my gosh, they even created a recipe book. Let's find out more. Home is where the heart is and where our hometown memories are drawn from. Our Fox Lake neighbors are gathering together to share their hometown memories in a sweet and savory taste of home party. Lori, when we visited you at the October Festival, if you remember, we did ask to be invited to all these things, so thank you for remembering. Absolutely. <laughs> We love crashing Fox Lake parties. Absolutely, we enjoy that. Okay, now describe to us today what's the Taste of Home event all about? Our Taste of Home for Fox Lake is basically a fancy potluck dinner. We have asked all of our fabulous cooks, neighbors, to bring a dish either from their home state that they came to Sun City from or their country of origin, or just their favorite dish that they like to make. And we had such an astounding turnout sign up. You'll see behind you, we have all kinds of activities going on. Um, we have uh, a hummingbird cake coming from the state of South Carolina. We have anapasta salad coming from New Jersey. Boston baked beans, I don't know, maybe from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Company rice, I haven't heard where that one's from yet, but we'll find out. Uh, we have a paw Dutch potato filling, which is from Amish country in Pennsylvania. Pierogies from New Jersey. Are you, are from you New Jersey? Okay, yet? wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Well, um, I had to go grab these because I'm not coming to a taste of home party without talking about my hometown well, and wonderful. pretty much yours. New Jersey oh, pierogies. No, I am not New Jersey. Ohio. H-I-O. Pierogies. Absolutely. Right, right. We are actually bringing pepperoni rolls, which I'm sure that's more of an Italian dish, but I've been making them ever since I was there in my early 20s, just a few years ago, and I've been making them ever since. So that was our dish that we brought from Ohio, but we also have, um, we have from Rhode Island via the Ukraine. I asked her to, to, to spell this out for me. It's Kasha Varnishkas. Oh. I'm excited to find out what that is. It's a Jewish pasta dish. We also have Krugel, which is also a, a Jewish dish from Pennsylvania. Uh, Polish cookies. Texas sheet cake, we can all guess where that's <laughs> from. Uh, and I believe that's it that I'm aware of. But if you scan that table back there, you're going to see some delicious recipes. And some that may have even come from our neighborhood cookbook that we made up before Christmas. We sold it as a fundraiser, and there are still copies available. And you can also order a digital copy. And it was just a fun little idea. And we are so blessed to have so many great cooks in Fox Lake and all of Sun City. This is when they weren't busy decorating the entire neighborhood for Christmas. <laughs> that was they, a great activity. They fit in the, let's let's publish a cookbook, digital and print. Okay, overachieving Fox Lake, we love you. <laughs> and we love being here and having you guys here to join us. We're probably gonna try to find some of your neighbors and ask where their hometown is and maybe what they brought tonight. Absolutely, in fact, oh, I didn't bring up one with me, but we are doing a little icebreaker game where we had a copy of the United States with all the states outlined, not named. We're finding out some people are not sure where the other states are. So this is a fun icebreaker we're doing. And there might be a few little prizes floating around at the end. Thank you for letting us in. Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> we, we, you know. <laughs> We'll have you for the what? next event, which I think we're doing a game night next. It's Schwarzenegger that said, I'll be back. Well, absolutely, <laughs> we'll have you. Okay. And 
My favorite dish of all time. Let me see. I, there's a lot of them. My wife's sausage and pepper is awesome. I love lobsters, um, mussels. I mean, I, I, any kind of seafood because I'm on Long Island and we have a whole bunch of seafood. Um, what else? Uh, what else do you want to know? Come on, talk. Oh, it's your turn. Oh. <laughs> My favorite food. I guess I like uh, penny alla vodka, a pasta. Yep. It's delicious. Okay, I'm gonna try. Hey, go pass it on to you. What gonna do with this? You gotta tell them where you're from. Three beers I'm enough for everybody. I'm from. Okay, I'm from Patchogue, Long Island. My favorite dish is seafood fra diavolo. That is an Italian seafood dish. Hi there, from Reading, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Dutch country. So I love chicken pot pie, corn pie. I'm trying to think what else I can think of. That's uh, scrapple. <laughs> and the Eagles, number one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim Braden. I'm from the Boston area. And fresh off the boat lobster is my favorite. I'm Diane Braden, also from the Boston area, and um, yeah, I love the seafood from Boston. Jim used to dive and he'd bring it up fresh and it was pretty special. But we didn't bring seafood to this dinner tonight, we brought Boston baked beans. Hi, I'm Annette Simon from Orville, Ohio, which is about an hour south of Cleveland, and um, been here since July. Um, just anything, I guess, from Ohio would be anything with from the beef line. We're known for, for the beef up there. I'm Bob Simon from Orville. Um, delicacy is pretty much what comes off a farm. Vegetables, beef, pork. So. On January 23rd, the Basket Walk neighborhood held a ladies' tea party as a fundraiser for Memory Matters. What a wonderful idea for helping others and enjoying a lovely afternoon with friends and neighbors. Let's take a look. really happy to welcome about 16 ladies from Basket Walk neighborhood to a tea at Judy Smith's house. And the reason we decided to have a tea, the Women's League of the Low Country picks a charity to do a fundraising for. 
and individuals are challenged to do fundraising. And Judy had a great idea to have a tea and invite the ladies, have tea sandwiches and wonderful teas and little desserts. And it was $20 and everyone brought $20 and that will go to Memory Matters. And Judy, my co-hostess here, knows quite a bit about Memory Matters. Memory Matters have been around for about 11, 11 years. I was amazed at it. But they also have a good course called Brain Busters. For people, you know how you go into a room and you go, why am I here? Well, they have a course called Brain Busters and it gives you ideas of what to do. There's so much, so much available at money at many, memory matters, not money matters. <laughs> yes, I have a story about. We were talk. I tutor, and a little boy was telling me, "Well, my mother's going to learn. My mother and my grandmother are going to learn to remember things." I said, "Oh, your grandmother?" He said, "Yeah, my obula. So they're going to a thing called my, memory matters, and they're going to learn to remember, so I can remember to do my homework." <laughs> All right, we had tea sandwiches today. We had chicken salad, pimento salad, um, c cucumbers with, pim uh, with cream cheese, and we had cream cheese with pineapples, lots of desserts. And Carrie's going to tell you about the, the, the tea. Well, when I was a little girl, I have great memories of having tea with my grandmother and actually into young adulthood. And one of my favorites is a Bigelow tea. And I just happened to be friends with Edie Atori, who worked for Bigelow tea. So she came and gave a little tea talk to the ladies today about where tea is grown, how it's picked, the different brands, the different kinds that are so good for you. And um, tea really went up in value during COVID because so many people were trying to get their antioxidants through drinking tea, which is so good for you. And after watching the English shows, especially Downton Abbey, they always had afternoon tea that seemed to solve all their problems. And we just thought having a tea for the ladies would be just a delightful thing to do. I worked for Bigelow Tea Company for 21 years. I had the um, great honor of representing them in uh, the airline and cruise line business. And it was always a fun, fun product to sell, a romantic product. Everyone has great memories about tea. Um, the different varieties of tea were easy to sell, um, but just always sometimes the price point was not easy to get on contract with. But I always enjoyed my association with this still family owned and operated tea company out of Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, yes, hi. The proper way to steep a tea a bag is to, first of all, uh, pour hot water over your tea bag. Um, or if you use loose tea to have a tea infuser, you can actually put it over the top of the cup and put the loose tea in that and pour the water over it. Water temperature should be at 180 degrees. If you use the tea bag, you should... Um, steeping is actually a personal um, preference, but if you look at a tea bag, a Bigelow tea bag, they have put uh, steep times on the tea bag suggested because different teas, um, different varietals of teas require different steep times. Now, again, when you take the tea bag out, you should not, um, I'm sorry, that fell on the table, squeeze it because that puts tannins back into your tea, which would be, um, make, make it a little bit uh, tart or for you. This tea is just outstanding, and I mean, such variety of Bigelow tea. I've tried the orange tea for the first time. I'm uh, new here in Sun City, came from California, and these ladies are fabulous. <laughs> this is a great place to be. i uh, just so glad I made it to the lunch. Thank you. It's very, very good. You're done. Yes, thank you. The sandwiches are delicious. And I didn't have a skirt or a dress, so I had the fascinator, so <laughs> that's why I wore that. And I didn't think to wear white gloves, but <laughs> next time. <laughs> this is lovely.
This is the first time that I have ever been to a tea party with a group of ladies. As a young girl, I used to have my tea parties with three Irish setters because I was an only child. And that was a very interesting tea party. certainly knows how to have fun. On February 17th, they held a Mardi Gras party with an authentic New Orleans flair. Let's take a peek. activity going on today. Like, what in the world is going on? Well, we had our Mardi Gras party tonight at Riverbend, and it's been wonderful. It's the Aviaries annual party, and thanks to this young lady from New Orleans and all her hard work, we pulled it off. Uh, it was a group effort. We all got, we have a great social community. We have an absolutely amazing neighborhood, and everybody offered to help, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I grew up in New Orleans, and it was a lot of fun to bring some of New Orleans to the aviary, Sun City, yay! And Judy, Judy's brother, who also lived in New Orleans, is even here, and he brought authentic pies from New Orleans. Yes. So we have real authenticity here in Sun yes, City. We yes, we do. You also have quite a bit of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> guys. Oh, Judy! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of a party girl. <laughs> so Mardi Gras is. The party to have every yes. year, that's for oh, sure. Oh, I agree. Well, I tell you, if you invite us, we'll be coming. Well, we, we do not guys. get the baby. Do you know the story of the baby? If that we've ever, Sherry, my husband, and another lady made king cakes. And really? you have a baby in the king cake. And if you get the baby, when I was growing up, that person had to give the next party. So one of our neighbors got the baby, and we said, great, next year is on you. <laughs> you guys make sure that happens. We'll I, think she, I, yeah, I think she put it back in another piece after we told her that. <laughs> oh, that's cute.
It's never tiring to see the decorations each neighborhood puts up for various holidays. Let's take a look at some of them they did for Valentine's Day. If your neighborhood has an event that you would like us to cover, just contact us via email at sctvhh at gmail.com. Just let us know two weeks before your event so that we can arrange to film it for our show.